this layer here. Today we are we got to monthly entertainment. No one is like five years of it because we want to do five years. I mean, because I want to do it. But I love doing monthly entertainment on videos because they're made for horror and crap. So I know. And I love this. I love the, I love the videos, but, but we're just going to start and I didn't say right now. And then there's nine. So the the this one we're gonna react to is True Classic Horror Story. Hmm. Huh. The classic of the first one. That's what it is. My name is Emma, and this happened to me a few years ago, back when I was in college. What happened was that two girls were missing in my town, and they were also some of my classmates. They both had blue eyes and brown hair. So, one of my classmates, who I will call James, invited me to come over to his place. I didn't personally know him, but I told him sure, because I'm a nice person, and that I would be able to come over on a Saturday. To be safe, I asked my friend, who will be called Grace, to just park out James's house, and if I didn't come out in an hour, she would come in and ask where I was. This was just to give me a sense of safety, <clears throat> and thank God she said yes. Grace is a martial artist, <clears throat> so wow. it gave a large sense of safety. Wow. So, Saturday came, and I went to James's house. <clears throat> we talked about school and whatnot, until I hear a oomph <clears throat> sound from the basement. I asked James what it was, and he just responded, I don't know either. So when James went upstairs, now was my chance to check it out. The sound. I went down into the basement. Wow. It was nice, but I saw a door with an outside lock on it by the stairs, and the mm -hmm. sound was definitely coming from there. Mm -hmm. I opened the door, mm -hmm. and what I saw still somewhat haunts me to this day. Mm -hmm. What was in there were the two girls that had gone missing. What? I immediately recognized them. No the blue way. eyes and brown hair. Their ankles and legs were tied up, as well as their torso being... No way. So that's what the, the girls the girls missing, missing paper from the start. That's where they were at. Wow, that's really, that's really um, undemocratic. Tied up from below their breast to just above their stomach. Jeez. One of them had a piece of duct tape on her mouth, mm. and another had a piece of cloth that went from below her nose to just on top of her chin. Mm. I gasped and then started trying to untie them, but then felt drowsy and fell down unconscious. Mm. When I awoke, I found out there was a piece of duct tape on my mouth and that I was tied up the same way as them. Mm. At first, I tried untying one of the girls' hands, as R had been tied in an X shape, so it would be easier to untie. However, when that failed, I remembered that Grace would come for us. So we waited for about 30 minutes until Grace would show up. When she did, we heard her asking about where I was, so we tried to scream through our gags. She heard it and asked to investigate, and we hear her coming down. She opened the door and was about to get tranquilized, but she disarmed him and knocked James unconscious. Jeez. Grace untied us, and we called the cops. I have always thanked Grace for saving me. Yeah, However, yeah. sometimes, nowadays, I ask myself what would have happened had I not asked Grace to come. Oh, yeah, what happened if you didn't? Yeah, what happened if you didn't call Grace? What happened, what happened if you didn't call your friend Grace to come in? He would kill three y'all instantly. Yeah, how, what would happen? What would happen, guys? If she didn't call Grace. She won't. That's really his thing to go off with that so much. That was that first one we've been watching. So let's watch. True homeless homeless horse story. Let's watch it. Is it homeless? Check it out. Getting lots of eye contact. I feel like this is going well. I just wish I knew what she was. A true homeless horse story. I still can't forget that day. 
12 years ago, I lived as a homeless person during some period in my 20s. Mm. It was a time when I used to walk the streets and survive on a single loaf of bread. One day, I was sleeping on the street and had a strange dream. In the dream, a monster with a hundred eyes was mm. running towards me. I woke up screaming as the monster came right in front of me. It was a dark morning, and as my eyes began to adjust to the darkness, I realized that a stranger was standing right in front of me. I was so startled. Then he came right up to my nose and started groping my face with his hand. I shouted, asking what he was doing, being astonished. Then he stopped, put his palms together, and chanted strange incantations as he walked backwards. I can't remember clearly, but I think he said something like this. The visible world is fake. He was dressed like a monk and was walking with his eyes closed. I was so horrified, but was so tired and hungry that I didn't even have the energy left to do anything. So I just slept again. However, the next day I overheard other homeless people talking to each other. Is everyone okay? I think we're fine. Fortunately, everyone seems to have blocked it well. I asked them what they were talking about, and they told me something shocking. The story was that someone unknown was coming every night and secretly plucking out the eyeballs of homeless people. Oh. It was the so-called eyeball hunter. Eyeball hunter. As soon as I heard that, I was shocked and stopped breathing for a moment. Wow. Because it seemed to me that he was the person I saw in the morning. Oh, the monk. Then I found out why so many homeless people here had no eyes. Oh, wow. I was overwhelmed with too much fear. But it is rumored that he didn't kill anyone. One day, he plucked out the eyeballs of a homeless man. And the homeless man shouted that he would rather be killed. But the eyeball hunter left, saying that it was his principle not to kill humans. My whole body trembled hearing that. At that time, if I had only woken up three seconds later, I couldn't even imagine what would have happened. Only then did I find out why the homeless there were staying vigil every night. I've always thought that they were on watch, not to be deprived of food. But I didn't know it was actually to protect their eyes. Since then, I decided to join a group of homeless people because I couldn't sleep on my own. And I was able to stay safe for a while, keeping a night watch in the group. <coughs> then one day, early in the morning, I heard a loud scream. Everyone woke up, but one homeless man was rolling around, putting his hands over his eyes. There was blood all over his face and on the floor. And I saw the back of the monk who was running at a tremendous speed in the distance. There was an eyeball hunter. I could hear people shouting and buzzing. We hurriedly called an ambulance and he was taken away. It turned out that the person who was on night watch fell asleep for a while. And it happened in the middle of it. We reported it to the police. I was really terrified and felt that I couldn't stay there any longer. I tried desperately to get out of there. Finally able to end my homeless life, I rented a small house and started my new life. Mm -hmm. After some time passed, I visited the homeless people I was close with. Oh, wow. They welcomed me, and according to what they said, they heard that the eyeball hunter was caught by the police. Okay, finally. And the eyeball hunter said to the police as follows. Oh. It is only after human beings see the world through their eyes that prejudices and sins arise. Only when you are not deceived by appearances do you know the true meaning of life. That is why I remove people's eyes so that they can truly become enlightened. He believed it would save people and he had no eyes either. It was self-removed. However, he said that he can see the world through his third eye, called Chakra, after long practice, even though he has no eyes. How he sees is still a mystery, and I suddenly remembered one thing. 
On the day he first appeared in front of me, the black plastic bag he was holding in his hand, the bag contained several round-shaped objects. Wow. I thought it was just fruit or something, no, but I just found wrong. out what those things were. Nice. I'm still suffering from insomnia every day. He's in prison, but for some reason I keep thinking he's likely to break into my house. Now I sleep with my glasses on every day because I feel like I can protect my eyes by doing this. I want to get out of this fear as soon as possible. If only I could erase him from my memory. Yeah, what would happen? What would happen if he didn't? What happened if he didn't leave his eyes in time? He will die. He will never have no eyes, and he can't see nothing. That's that's a bad idea, though. So that's really gonna be a bad idea. So. Okay, we're going to, so the next one we're going to watch in his other latest video is Walking Home Alone Horror Story. So this is our third, and then we're, there, then we're going to pick our fourth and fifth. Um, let's watch it then. Don't worry about the, don't, don't, don't worry about the, um, the advertisements, really. Walking I live in the UK. And I'm a 19-year-old guy, and I've been working at a bar for the past two years. Okay. I normally finish very early in the morning. Mm. This happened about a year ago, mm. and I'll never forget it. Mm. It had started as a normal shift. Mm. I got there and started taking orders and making cocktails mm -hmm. and all the stuff. And six hours went by, and it was about midnight when two loud male customers, who were in their mid-30s at least, came in the bar. They looked like they had been out all day and didn't seem to care what they had said or who they said it to. One of them stood about six feet and he had a slim build. He looked like he was an active drug user or something along those lines. And the other was about 5'9 with an unhealthy build. His face looked shabby and he had messy hair and yellow teeth. Mm. He made me feel uneasy, but I had to do my job. I approached them and asked if they would like to order a drink or anything, and they both just looked blankly at me. Mm. I stood there looking at them both silently while music was blaring out of the speakers. I then broke the silence, saying I will come back over in a few minutes to ask again, and I went to another table. About two minutes had passed, and they ended up approaching a group of girls about my age and wouldn't leave them alone. You could tell the girls felt uncomfortable. Now, I'm not saying I'm tough or anything, and I stand at about five foot nine and weigh about 140 pounds, so I'm not exactly an intimidating person. Mm. But I went over and asked the girls if they were okay, and if they knew these guys who sat with them. They all looked at me, eyes widening, shaking their heads and saying, no, and they won't leave us alone. I sternly asked the men to move tables, and if I have to ask again, they'll be thrown out. They suddenly got up and glared at me with crazed eyes. I get this a lot at the bar I work at, so it didn't really bother me. They slowly walked past me and through the exits, and I thought that was the end of it. How wrong I was. The bar closed an hour after that, and we ushered out the rest of the customers so we could clean up at the end of the night. The girls who I helped thanked me and asked for my number, and I politely declined, saying I wasn't interested. After we had finished cleaning up the bar, it was about 2 a.m., and one of my friends asked if I wanted a lift home. But I only lived a 20-minute walk from where I work, so I politely declined and said I would see them tomorrow. I started walking, putting one earphone in, so I could listen to some music while walking home. Okay, I'd made it about five minutes into the walk before I heard a muffled scream coming from a small alleyway to my left. I took out my earphone and proceeded to listen again, and sure enough, I heard it again. At this point, I called out asking if someone was there and if they were okay while slowly moving towards the sound. I pulled up my phone and shined my torch towards the noise. What I saw terrified me. The two guys from the bar had grabbed one of the girls from the bar and was attacking her. And for her safety, I'll leave it at that. Her eyes were crazed, pleading for me to help her, and I just stood there frozen. The two guys looked at me, and the smaller one said to me, You'd better turn around and leave, boy, or things are gonna get serious. It stopped me out of my fear, and I said, trying to be as confident as possible, Let her go, or else. 
I said these words feeling terrified, and I think those guys could tell because he got up and moved towards me, raising his fists, ready to fight. Instinctively, I responded by getting into a boxing stance. He swung his fist at me, and due to him being drunk, Ooh. I easily moved out of the way. I clocked him on his temple, yeah. and he dropped to the floor, no. smashing his head against the concrete. I turned towards the girl and asked if she was okay until I realized the taller man had moved. He dived and tackled me to the ground. I panicked as we rolled around wrestling on the ground for a few seconds and he pinned me to the ground. He started screaming at me and began punching me. In that instance, seeing his crazed eyes inches away from my face, I thought I was going to die. And in the corner of my eye, I saw the girl I had tried to save grab a spray and begin to spray it in the man's eyes. He let out a massive scream and fell backwards onto the ground, clenching his eyes. In that instant, I grabbed the hand of the girl and we ran all the way back to my house. We quickly got inside, locked all the doors, and we were silent for a good half hour. I broke the silence, asking her if she was okay and if she was hurt. She didn't reply, just sat there, curled up in a ball on the floor. I said to her, I think we should stay here tonight, and that I would take her to the police station early next morning. She nodded her head in agreement. I gave her my bed, I took some blankets and pillows, and tried to fall asleep on the couch, but I couldn't. In the morning, I kept my promise and took her to the police station and gave my description of the men. The officer said, thank you, and sent me on my way. He assured me he would take care of the girl now. I said my goodbyes to the girl, and she still didn't speak to me. Wow. I felt terrible about what had happened to her, but I was glad I was there to help. I had to miss work the next day due to being battered and exhausted from the night before. While I was at home, I saw in the news that two men were apprehended by the police and both locked away almost instantly. I hope they get what they fucking deserve. Yes, the scariest part of the story is what if I took the ride my friend offered? Yeah. What would have happened to the girl? Yeah, I dare not even think about it, and I was lucky enough to save her. Yeah, you were lucky to save her. Yeah, if you didn't, if you took the ride your friend offered, the girl will be gone, will be dead, and been hot and taken hostage, so you can't, the guy. Yeah, you, you, you was really, you were really lucky to save her. So we're going to like watch like one more video because I'm not trying to um, go over. I just want to stick over it, so. Um, let's watch this. Our last one we're going to watch is of the overcoat. The overcoat, so let's watch it anyway. Chapter 3, Isabella's POV. I was woken up by the sound of yelling. Good news for horror fans. Tonight I'm going to be a ghost hunter and go hunt down the ghosts that haunt the old inn. Mm. I'm sponsored by this awesome horror game company, Hunt a Killer, so I can make good animations for you guys. As you all know, I'm a horror fanatic, but there aren't many interesting horror contents in the world. So, I'm a fan of this game, Ghastly Manor. Hunt a Killer has several types of immersive oh, murder mystery games. Really you. Each game puts you at the center of the crime to solve, and is full of all sorts of puzzles and ciphers. Time will fly by as you escape into the realistic plot that twists and turns with loads of deviant characters. You can have a thrilling game night with friends, a date, or alone. Hunt a Killer offers subscription box seasons, or you can also try one of the many all-in-one games. There's a spoiler-free online community of over 100,000 members. If players get stuck or just want to chat about true crime, wish me good luck to catch five ghosts today. You too. Go to the link in my comment and description and get a discount and play the game. This is a true story of mine, which I still get chills when I think of it. It was the winter in 1989. I was 15 back then. So winters in our state are very cold, and even snowfall happens here. So my friend John had invited me over to a party at his house that night. I didn't want to go, but all of our friends would be there, so I decided to go. It was so cold that I wore a sweater and two overcoats. I set out for his house, which was around a mile from mine. So on the way, I saw a girl. She would have been around the same age as me. She was very attractive and was wearing a little old-fashioned 
clothes, long hair up to her waist, lavender pink dress, but they were indeed so beautiful. I went up to her and asked, hey, what are you doing alone on such a cold night? She asked me, are you going to the party? I replied, yes, and by looking at you, it seems that you're going there too. She said yes, and then we started walking together towards my friend's house. I haven't seen her before, but again, I only just came here a year ago, so it could be that I just never came across her before. I asked her, what's your name? And she told me, it's Julie. There were quite a lot of people at the party. So in the party, everyone seems not to know her. They thought she was my friend. I did not deny it. She had a very charming personality, and she was with one group a moment, and then the other group the next moment. Everyone liked her. But when the food and drinks were served, I noticed that she didn't eat or drink anything. As for me, I ate heartily and drank a couple of sips too. So it was time for me to go home as it was midnight. Julie also came with me, and on the way back, it was very cold, and Julie didn't have much protection against the cold, so I gave her one of my two overcoats. We walked a few more steps, and then I asked her, I'll drop you off. Where do you live? She told me, there's a shortcut up ahead through the alleyway. I live just up there ahead in Wolfsburg. I will go there, but thanks for insisting to help. I told her, I had a great time with you. You can return the overcoat whenever you want. She came ahead and kissed me on my cheeks. And then we waved our goodbyes and went our own way. The next day, I was in awe of Julie, so I decided to meet her. I went up to that alley where she told me she lived ahead of there. When I went through, there was a house which was empty. No one lived there. It seemed like it was empty for years. Had Julie played a joke? I went up ahead and there lived the Taylor family. I went to their house and asked, does someone named Julie live anywhere near? I met her at the party yesterday and she told me she lived just ahead of the alley. When I went there, it was an old abandoned house. Mrs. Taylor told me, I don't think any Julie lives here anywhere. And about that abandoned house, it's called Wolfsburn House. The McKinnon family used to live there 40 years ago. They moved out when their only daughter had died. What? She stopped and gave me a queer look and continued. I think her name was Ju Julie. She had died of an accident. I think her grave is just up ahead in the cemetery. I got chills when I heard that. I thanked Mrs. Taylor and went on towards the cemetery. It was a real... There were a lot of graves, but it didn't take me long to find Julie's. Oh. And it was carved Julie McKinnon, 1933 to 1949. With us one moment, taken the next. Gone to her creator. Gone to her rest. Oh. And there behind the grave, neatly folded, was my overcoat in the grass. Wait. To this date, I still remember her. Yeah. Her beauty. Her charming personality. Mm -hmm. I will never forget her. Mm. It wasn't a whole story at all. It wasn't a whole story at all. It was just like a sad story. It's like a sad story. It's not. A, it's not even a real horror. It's not a real horror story. It's just. A, it's just a, a, a sad story. It's like a sad story for. Yes. Because I well the only thing I know about him on C is like but that 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 um that video we watched that wasn't even a horror story. That was a sad story. Last one but I'm gonna end it right here because I'm not gonna keep you up keep keep you up at all night for that. But I'm gonna end the video right here, join the keep it squad. Okay. Bye bye.